Hello everybody and welcome to a certain scientific railgun T episode 13 anime review. Uh, don't know when the next episode's gonna be, we'll get it out of the way first of all. I don't think they've said it, I would guess it's not gonna be next week, that would make a lot of sense. But um, no, this episode itself, it was like the first, well at the beginning I was really worried because we started with a big old, a big long old recap and that was a bit concerning, you know, because it was, it was so long I was like how much of this is actually going to be, like, proper episode? It turned out the second half of the episode was just stuff going off all over the place and it was pretty goddamn awesome, so it was fine. But, uh, yeah, that opening bit had me concerned. But, uh, no, it was a... It was a... When you got past that, and especially in the second half, you got a, it, it was a good old week. Kuroko is a badass? Like, she does some badass stuff this episode? Like, really badass? Like, we'll get to it, but, god... Her pain tolerance must be through the roof, is all I'm gonna say. Also, Misaki is an evil genius, and I love her. And, uh, Tomo was- Tomo was there. And, and Gunha was- wasn't there, really. That- that's the- the rundown of the episode. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into the episode, see how it went down in more detail. A little bit more detail, that would be helpful. Uh, and do this thing. So as I said just a minute ago, we have the- Previously, on Railgun T. For like four and a half minutes, it's Kuroko going through. Basically, here's the thing for this. At first, I was like, "Oh yes, that's good," because you know it's been an extra week, extra two weeks. I forget when the last, the last episode was. To be completely honest, it's been that long ago. Uh, but yeah, no, Kuroko was narrating it, and it's like that's pretty handy. But then it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. And I was like, "Are they just? Are they just added this because they couldn't? You know, they didn't have enough time." Obviously, understandable, I'm not complaining about it, but it's just like, it was worrying, as I say. But uh, we get past that and everything. Where we left off, Misaki has lost the code and she's in like a weird, not very nice to look at state, we'll say. Uh, meanwhile, to Toma and Gunha are still, are still, Gunha, I love saying his name, it's so funny. I should say Sugita, but I'm not going to. Uh, they're fighting uh, Misaka point two, three, whatever, whatever it's called. I saw people, I saw like on a YouTube video, people were like 5.2 or something. I'm like, is that the official name? Because, I mean, it makes sense, but it's kind of weird, you know. Um, anyway, they're doing that. Kuroko is still searching for Kozaku. She's checking absolutely everywhere. Doesn't realize Kozaku is, you know, not technologically inept and is looking at, you know, the feed on an iPad on a camera, which really they should have figured out, out a lot quicker. I guess, no, the building didn't have cameras, so it sort of makes sense. But come on, come, look at what they've done. You think they, they, they haven't thought that far ahead? Uh, you know, all I'm saying. Uiharu and Sutton, yeah, realize Kozaku has got one of the orb cameras from, you know, for the, the festival, uh, you know, to record the stuff. And that she's hacked one of them, basically. So, uh, yeah, then Kuroko checks one last place by the vending machine there. And that's all I remember about it. But uh, then she has a little debate with herself. Think for a minute. She's like, oh, I've checked everywhere she could be. Oh, she's in the bloody sewers, isn't she? As she thinks this, she gets attacked by the metal thing. Uh, Kuro Kuroko then teleports and gets shot. Kuroko is dead. That's the end of the. That's the end of Kuroko. Uh, that's yeah. That's definitely it. Yeah. So Kozaku kills Kuroko. Uh, definitely kills her. She flops like a proper fish. Uh, and yeah, then she has a little realization. She's like, that. That was it. That was it. And meanwhile, the top half of Misaka's body, like her head, is just like it looks like a galaxy. Now, I don't know how to, not like a chocolate bar, like a, uh, like the actual, you know, space thing. Um, Gunhar gets smacked again, which, uh, effectively, I mean, no, not effectively, he KOs him. He's out of, he's out of action. And Toma's like, huh, that's, that's not good. Gunhar, Gunhar's over there, knocked out. Uh, Kozaku then presses a button, and Gensei presses a button, uh, and Misaka sets off a big old black hole, like a black hole railgun type thing that she's going to launch at the, the windowless building. Everything's going according to the bad guy's plan. Who can save the day? Bloody Kuroko shows up in the sewers and confronts Kozaku and is really worn out. You know, she's like, oh, bloody hell. I got wounds. I'm tired. I just want to go home. Um, and now I'm in a sewer. It stinks. And it's not just your bad badness, Kozaku. I don't know what I'm saying. So Uiharu hacked into the camera from before, the orb camera, and made Kozaku see that Kuroko got shot 
in actuality. She didn't get shot, it was like a fake video feed thing that smart people do in all the movies. That the hacker guy is like, but but there was no one on the camera. But meanwhile, like the bank's being robbed, you know? It was a similar thing to that. Uh, Kozaku, however, she's not out, she's got knives. Knives are pretty dangerous. So she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit her after she teleports. Not expecting, she just throws the first knife. Kuroko just takes it, like, it goes through her hand. I, I watched the, that scene again. The knife is fully through her hand, and she just doesn't even flinch. I know she's, like, meant to be specially trained or whatever, but she's 13 at a stretch, you know? I wasn't getting stabbed at 13. I would be annoyed, I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be holding back tears if I grazed my knee. So, Kuroko, you, you got metaphorical balls, I guess we'll say. Uh, but no, then she absolutely, like, she got, she proper punches and kicks, like, her fighting in this, like, the sounds, for, I'll mention that now, actually, throughout this whole episode, the music was just, like, on point, it was really epic the whole time, and it was awesome, uh, but no, this part, Kuroko, just proper punches, like, they've had force these punches, and kicks and whatever, takes out Kozaku as she's falling unconscious, she thinks about poor Dolly, remember Dolly from before, she, she dead, <sighs> poor Dolly, you know? Uh, meanwhile, Gensei is having a little freak out because he realizes, basically, Misaki tricked him into thinking that, uh, thinking she had no plan and the, basically, we le learn in this next bit exactly what happened because it is a bit confusing for him and he's like, actually, what did he do, you know, why has that done that? Turns out, uh, Misaki was trying to get rid of the, the thing anyway because it was, it was, had more negatives than positives, looking at really... Uh, analytically, uh, and she was like, "Okay, well, I need. I got the self-destruct code. How do I? How do I get him to do it?" And she, what she does is she uses the thing on her own brain to swap the codes in her brain, and it deletes the memory of her doing it. So basically, she's betting on the fact that she'll lose without knowing about the previous plan. Like she erased the whole memory of the plan after the fact. So it's like past Misaki has sent future Misaki in there. So. Prop Misaki was still trying to win because she didn't know about like the backup if she lost, you know what I mean? Uh, but no, the real plan was for her to lose anyway, and then delete the delete the thing, the uh, the brain. What's it called? Exterior. Braids. My brain's gone right there. Uh, so yeah, so Kuroko won. Misaki won in a way, I guess. So that just leaves Toma. Toma realizes, hey. You know, this is it's different. I guess everyone's done what they needed to do and whatever. But then, uh, then we get like inside Misaka, the like actual Misaka, like I guess her consciousness is sort of back proper. And she's like, "I'm doing a bad thing. I should probably stop that." She sees the black hole bomb or whatever, and it's like, "Can we stop that, please?" And the little weird tentacles are like, "No, we will not stop that." And she's like, "Well, crap. I can't do nothing." Uh, and then Toma's like, "Well, guess it's not over yet. I got to do the Toma thing." And that was cool. And then the episode ended and I was like, I thought we were wrapping this up this week. I thought they said that on a tweet or something. Uh, I, who knows? You know, it's, um, I'm not disappointed. I Like, I'd rather they, you know, take their time off, especially now. But I sort of thought they were going to wrap up this arc and then just go on break and be like, we'll be back when we can. Obviously not knowing, I don't know, specifics and everything. But uh, I think that's what it's gonna be. Oh, one more funny thing they did. In the episode preview, Thomas said the uh, the line, that the index line was like, magic and science, fight and all that, then the story starts. It's not exactly like that, but you get you know the one I'm talking about. And then Gunha was all like, don't bring that to our show, dude, please, you know? We all saw season three of Index, and Toma is just like, well, it wasn't that bad. And he, they're like, shut up. It's basically how the conversation went. I may be embellishing a few things here, but, uh, but yeah, it's basically, that was the episode. I enjoyed it, as I said. Uh, it's, I'll be interested to when this, like, when it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever. I think I'll definitely have to give this a rewatch because the, the breaks are hurting it. It's still good, you know, but uh, yeah, I think it's definitely one I'm going to rewatch, like, properly, if you know what I mean, like, without interruption. I think that would, that's going to help it a lot when, when that, uh, when that happens. I know it's a, quite a ways off, but Gives me time to forget things, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good episode. Kuroko was definitely the standout. Her punches, man. And, the, and taking the knife. How much would that hurt? A lot. I don't know why I asked it. It would hurt a lot. Anyway, thank you, everybody, 
for sitting through this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and stuff for more reviews. That would help me out a lot. Thank you very much. I will see you when they do another episode for another episode of this. And uh, take care. That's important. And bye, guys.